a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Believed in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switching baits, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their backs confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand that pulls the string. It makes his little puppets dance to every song he sings. It's a night Behold a pale horse ride. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Resurrect the Republic, RTR Truth Radio broadcast on RBN Network. I do hope that you are having a blessed day, and I want to thank you for joining us today. My question for today, and I have some phenomenal individuals that are coming up that will be on the show in just a little bit, but my question for the day is, the FBI protecting whom? There are a lot of the things that the FBI claims is the reason that they do the attacks upon individuals. And when I mean attacks, I don't mean a physical attack. I mean referencing uh, going against individuals like they have with Tom over something that not only is uh, there is no victim, but over an individual. And that because of our conversation yesterday and the exposing of what is going on, I kind of wanted to dig into that a little bit. The mission and priorities of the FBI, uh, this is what it says on their website. The FBI today is considered one of the world's most premier security and crime fighting forces. Reporting to both the Attorney General and Director of National Intelligence, the Bureau has dual responsibilities as a law enforcement and intelligence agency. Now, In order to figure out what their vision and mission is, I'm going to read that directly from their site. Their vision ahead of the threat through leadership, agility, and integration. Their mission is to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution of the United States. Their priorities protect the United States of America from terrorist attack. Protect the United States against foreign intelligence operations and espionage. Protect the United States against cyber-based attacks and high-technology crimes. Combat public corruption at all levels. Protect civil rights. Combat transnational national criminal organizations and enterprises. Combat major white-collar crime and combat significant violent crime. Now, in that list, not one of it has anything to do with individuals who may or may not be violating a statutory code. And that, to me, is a little bit amazing. But I I felt like I really needed to pull some information out, complete out of congressional testimony, because, you know, they, they say they're protecting the people. They want a an illusion that they are protecting the people by going after individuals what about the conspiracies and i'm not talking about conspiracy theories i'm talking about conspiracies where two or more people are working together in order for corruption to flourish within our union i want to know why that they are trying to make it as if or seem as if that they are good guys. Now, I am not 
bashing FBI agents or individuals in that manner. But my question is this. If you have good FBI agents in there, when they refuse to take a stand for your constitutional rights, knowing that what they are doing is a violation of your unalienable rights confirmed in the Constitution and and confirmed in the Bill of Limitations. Bill of Limitations, by the way, in case you don't know, is actually the Bill of Rights or what they call the Bill of Rights. But the Bill of Limitations is what it really is because it limits the federal government from being able to touch those areas. It does not limit the people. And even when they try to use the supremacy clause, in the supremacy clause, it has to be in pursuance thereof. It's not just a blanket check. So thus, they are being used, and I want to know why, if they are so good. And I know these some of these FBI agents have to have children. They have to. When you stand and do nothing and say nothing against the real criminals... I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself this. How do you justify going after an individual? In the U.S. Constitution, or the federal constitution, if you will, the federal constitution is an agreement between the states and the federal government. It is not an agreement between the people and the federal government. However, individuals who swear an oath to that federal constitution are bound thereby. And when you are bound thereby and you intentionally, intentionally violate that, then you have not only violated your oath, you're warring against the constitution itself. So I want to start with a couple of clips. And those clips, I just want to reiterate, because this is my message to the FBI agents who are really, truly see yourself as good. If you're truly good, then start doing your job and start making arrests, because it is all up in our government. And that, according to your mission and priorities is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yet instead, you're being used as handlers to go after individuals that report on truth, that speak truth, and even individuals that aren't even uh, doing that. Individuals that are standing for the Constitution that you swore an oath to uphold You are our employees and you are not our masters. You have a paycheck because of we the people. And yet nobody, nobody, whether it be in the ATF, the EPA, the DEA, the CIA, the White House, the Department of Justice, and the list goes on and on, and nobody gets arrested. Nobody gets charged. And after these clips, I'm going to quote some codes, the codes that you claim that you enforce. And how can you expect any of we the people to respect you and hold you as somebody who is honorable when you yourself do not fight in honor to put those that are corrupt, evil individuals with indictments and charges and put them behind bars exactly where they belong. So if you would, Mike, please play LV3. Here on this panel, better sponsor a bill to get rid of perverts interacting with the public because this is not acceptable. I can't imagine. Somebody comes with the authority of the EPA badge and then they've got sirens or or lights on their car 
and they're a registered sex offender? I mean, can you see the disconnect, why people would be outraged if they showed up at your place of business or work or some mom with their young child and, and suddenly you encounter this person? And how do you stand for that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, law and certified badge law enforcement officials have special responsibilities, uh, even more so than ordinary EPA employees. I can't believe you lost that case, but I, you know, part of me thinks we're going to have to work here to let's get the Merit Systems Protection Board up here and start explaining themselves how in the world they think this is in the best interest of the United States of America. Back to that most recent case uh, with the the child uh, molester. Um, you said, yeah, conclude that part about the Merit Systems Protection Board. I mean, based on the, the brief evidence that you shared with us, the scenario of the case, what were the other considerations that he got in order to resign from the EPA? Uh, he received a cash uh, settlement of $55,000, I believe. I'll have to check 55, my notes. 55, we, we paid, the American people paid him $55,000 to walk away? Yes. But, but, you know, the IG is not part of those negotiations. I, I, I'm not blaming you. You're the ones that actually highlighted this. Mr. Myberg. I, I mean, it's hard to hold you personally responsible for that. But how do, I mean, we had to pay $55,000 to this person? Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, in this particular case, which I'm, I'm generally aware of, um, the case as... as um, as Mr. Sullivan noted, was one where we had proposed removal and, in fact, took removal action and were reversed by the Merit System Protection Board. How do you lose that case? Um, there were, it's a complicated case, and I'm not going to try to go into all the details, but the Merit System Protection Board found that the basis for the removal was not sustained, and so they reversed it. So is, is it... I mean, it's just pretty stunning, isn't it? I mean... What, what needs to change? You, 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 you both are close to this situation. What needs to change? How do we need to change the Merit Systems Protection Board? Because what, what's not happening is we're not protecting the American people and the taxpayers, and we're not protecting the employees that have to sit by this freak uh, of a pervert. That's, that, we're not protecting them. So how do we protect the employees of the EPA and the American taxpayers? What do we need to do with the Merit Systems Protection Board to get them to take the changes? Uh, and Congressman, I would simply note a couple of things. One is that we share your desire to protect our own employees uh, from any adverse actions by, by other employees. So that's a, a clear area where there's agreement. And how is it that this person can operate in this atmosphere for so long? I mean, in the, in the case of, of Dallas, how is it, uh, Mr. Sullivan, you've looked at this case closely, how is it that this goes undetected for so long? It wasn't in our system or... Well, it, it didn't go undetected. It was just it was not reported to the IG. Uh, in 1999, our investigation revealed that the management in Region 6 in Dallas, EPA management, found out about his conviction. And um, at that time, he was stopped again by the police for uh, using lights and sirens. Or I don't know about the sirens, but I know about the emergency lights. And that was brought to the attention of EPA management. He was counseled and told not to do that again. But it was never brought to the attention of the IG in 1999. And what was his position back in 1999? What was he doing? He was a, um, an enforcement officer doing uh, civil inspections for the EPA. So his job would be to do what? To go out to a site and look uh, to, to examine to determine if there was any environmental violations. So we're putting it out there, interacting with the public. Mr. Myberg, how, how does this happen? I mean, if you know that this person has to register as a sex offender, has this type. Why do you put them in a position to have to interact with, with, with the public? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe there's any particular rule that says that if an employee is convicted of a crime in general, that they have to then report that to the agency. Um, Should that now, be the case? Should they have to, to report ongoing? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that's an important issue, and we're happy to work with you and with the Office of Personnel. I'm just asking your personal opinion. Do you believe that if you're convicted of a felony? Um, Mr. Chairman, again, I am here in my official capacity. I would rather okay. stay with uh, the official answer. As a, uh, somebody who's convicted as a sex offender, is there an internal policy to prohibit those types of perverts from interacting with the public in person? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we've asked that question, and we do not believe that we have uh, the authority to institute a policy to that effect. And we are not different from other agencies in that regard. But it's an important issue, and we agree with you on that. My time's expired. 
Okay, so on that note, sex offenders are being hired by the EPA and used as enforcement officers. Now, I don't know because it was not mentioned, if this quote-unquote enforcement officer had a weapon. But we do know that the EPA, in quite a few years, has been armed. So was this quote-unquote officer, who's a felon, registered sex offender, as admitted in Congress, was he armed? If so... Are they going to go after him? Why would they even put this gun in his hands and sending him to people's homes? So let's hear a little bit more. Please play LV1. So I'm going to start kind of simply with respect to the IRS uh, investigation slash target investigations. Were there at some point subpoenas in place? There were. Okay. Were there requests to preserve evidence in place? Yes. Were there ongoing congressional investigations? There were, sir. Were there ongoing IG investigations? Definitely. And purportedly, there was an ongoing DOJ investigation, although we've seen scant evidence of that. At least that's the allegation, right? Yes, and I'll ask Mr. Camus to further respond to that. That's correct, sir. There is an ongoing DOJ investigation. Okay. So you have subpoenas in place. You have requests to preserve evidence in place. You have ongoing congressional investigations. You have ongoing IG investigations. And you may very well have an ongoing DOJ investigation, all of which leads me to ask, what does it mean do not destroy slash wipe slash reuse any of the existing backup tapes for email? What does that mean? That means do not destroy, rewipe, or do anything to that material as it could be evidence or of import. Oh, so it means exactly what it says? Yes, sir. There's no hidden meaning? No, sir. Even I can understand that sentence. Don't do it, right? I mean, you can call, you can use fancy words like the Gauls if you want to, but don't destroy, wipe, reuse any of the existing backup tapes. Now, was that done? Yes, sir. Was it done after any of the following were in place? Subpoenas, requests to preserve, ongoing congressional investigations, ongoing IG investigations, or purported DOJ investigation? Yes, sir. It was done on March four, on or about March 4th, 2014, well after the commencement of all those activities. Wow. Now, uh, I want to ask you about an individual in a minute, but I want to ask you this. Sometimes things can be done accidentally. Let's go ahead and rule that out. Are we talking about just kind of a misstroke on a keyboard? Is that what causes these things to, dis- to disappear and be wiped? You just you type in a word and hit the wrong key? Does that do it? No, the destruction that we're talking about required the employees involved to actually pick up tapes and place them into a machine, turn the machine on to magnetically destroy it and obliterate the data. Well, it sounds like it'd be hard to accidentally do that. That's correct. All right, so we can rule out accident. That leaves negligence or intentional, willful, wanton. Do you know whether it was just sheer negligence, incompetence, or was it a higher level of scienter or mens rea? Our investigation has shown that the two employees who physically put those tapes into that machine are lower-graded employees at the Martinsburg West Virginia Computing Center. Okay, so I want to read this for the FBI agents who are listening to this show. 18 U.S. Code 1519, destruction, alteration, or falsification of records in federal investigations and bankruptcy. Whoever knowingly alters, destroys, mutilates, conceals, covers up, falsifies, or makes a false entry in any record, document, or tangible object with the intent to impede, instruct, or influence the investigation or proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction 
jurisdiction of any department or agency of the United States or any case filed under Title 11 or in relation to or contemplation of any such matter or case shall be fined under this title in prison not more than 20 years or both. Kindly get to that. Let us please go to and play LV2. If an agent stateside were soliciting a prostitute that was provided by a drug conspiracy he was investigating, what would punishment would you recommend? I, I can't recommend a punishment. I would just hope that would be thoroughly investigated. And um, So you're telling me nobody cares what the administrator of the DEA thinks should happen to an agent? You're powerless to express your opinion. You have no First Amendment right when it comes to who works for your agency. I have expressed my opinion what in a number of opinion? ways. What was your opinion? What did you express? What did you think the last proper year, sanction was? Last year, I sent an email and I sent a memo to every employee in DEA and put them on notice that this kind of conduct... My, my, my question acceptable. my question must have been ambiguous because I wasn't talking about future conduct. I was talking about past conduct. What punishment did you rep- did you re- recommend for conduct that happened in the past? Under the civil service law, I cannot recommend a penalty. I can't intervene in the disciplinary process. I can't even make a recommendation. What what does it take to get what what would it hypothetically what would it take to get fired as a DEA agent? Because the agents I used to work with were worried about using their car to go pick up dry cleaning. They they were actually worried about using their OGF OGV to to pick up dry cleaning. They they were worried about being disciplined. Apparently, that world has changed. Do you know whether any of the prostitutes were underage? I don't know that. Would would that impact uh, whatever recommendation you might have in terms of a sanction? I don't recommend the sanction. I I can't fire. I can't recommend a penalty. There's a guide that the deciding officials abide by, and they uh, they have a penalty guide that they look at. And the penalty guide for this kind of activity is anything from reprimand to removal. How about security clearance? Do you have any impact over that, whether or not an agent has a security clearance? No, there's adjudicative guidelines, and that has to well, be adjudicated I, 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 honestly, by the security people. Honestly, what power do you have? You have to work with agents over whom you can't discipline and have no control, and you have no control over the security clearance. What the hell do you get to do? What I can do is build on and improve mechanisms to make sure that the outcome is what we believe the outcome should be. And that is what happened in Cartagena. That is what's going to happen moving forward. Inspector General Horowitz, I I, I find that stunning. Um, Let me ask you this. Did the... Did the agents know that the cartels were providing the prostitutes? Um, What we found, Congressman, from looking in the file was that they should have known, given they're trained law enforcement agents and they were dealing with corrupt law enforcement, local law enforcement, that was providing them with the prostitutes as well as the the various gifts. Were they um, supposed to be investigating these cartels? Uh, They were. So they are receiving prostitutes from cartels that they are supposed to be investigating. And she can't fire those agents. Okay, so we have DEA that we've covered, IRS scandal that we've covered, EPA that we've covered. By all means, we have plenty for you to do. FBI, other than attacking individual citizens. With that, I would ask that you would please play LV5. But the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. 
was moving too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. So President Obama admits to training ISIL terrorists, 18 U.S. Code 2381 treason, whoever owing allegiance to the United States levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere is guilty of treason and shall suffer death or shall be in prison not less than five years and fined under this title, but not less than $10,000 and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. Let's see what Rand Paul has to say about this. Please play LV6. If there is a theme that connects the dots in the Middle East, it is that chaos breeds terrorism. What much of the foreign policy elite fail to grasp, though, is that intervention to topple secular dictators has been the prime source of the chaos. Intervention when both choices are bad is a mistake. Intervention when both sides are evil is a mistake. Intervention that destabilizes the Middle East is a mistake. So yes, we must now defend ourselves from these barbarous jihadists. But let's not compound the problem by arming feckless rebels in Syria who seem to be merely a pit stop for weapons that are really on their way to ISIS. Intervention is not always the answer and often leads to unintended consequences. But some will argue, no, no, it's not intervention that led to this chaos. We didn't have enough intervention. They say if we had only given the rebels more arms, ISIS wouldn't be as strong now. The only problem is the facts argue otherwise. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. We gave 600 tons of weapons to the rebels, and they got weaker and weaker, and ISIS grew stronger. Please Perhaps pause that for a second, Mike. By throwing all of these weapons into... And 600,000 tons of weapons to the rebels. You heard that yourself. That's Senator Rand Paul. By the way, these were all congressional records. You can find them. So what is it that it said on treason again? Whoever owing allegiance to the United States levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere is guilty of treason and shall suffer death or shall be imprisoned not less than five years and fined under the title but not less than ten thousand dollars and shall be incapable of holding any office under the united states and on that note we'll be right back after a word from the broadcast sponsors You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, Quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. AirOutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. 
Introducing the I Can Get To Silent Salesman mobile marketing app, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com now or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. Get the I Can Get 2. That's I-C-A-N-G-E-T, the number 2, silent salesman app at appsapart.com. That's A-P-P-S-A-P-A-R-T.com. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855, the number 2, keep it today. You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Stattmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and, of course, you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at NumanaRepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N-N-A, Republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to RTR Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN Network. We were discussing the FBI and whom are they protecting. We are addressing this situation for many different reasons, but of course also because of the information about Tom Lacavera Stewart, host of this show, was arrested by the FBI on uh, allegedly for a felon in possession of a weapon. And that happened December the 6th. So I have been addressing who is the FBI trying to make themselves appear to be heroes? And are they really heroes or are they scapegoats and will they start taking a stand and actually be the heroes that they want people to see them to be earlier in the show i read to you their mission their vision their priorities and with that i'm going to go back to i had just read the code for treason i'm trying to help the fbi out here a little bit um Because many people that have been exposed in congressional testimonies have been in violation of many of these laws, and no one has gotten fired. They have either been retired, and we the people still pay their paychecks, or they have been shuffled to a different office with a different job and no charges filed whatsoever against them. So I wanted to help them out tonight. I wanted to help them out and give them some codes for them to look up to kind of push them in a right direction to 
hold to their mission statement for we the people. Because they were not created to go after individuals. They were created to go after enterprises and unlawfully created at that, which we will go into later into the show. But I would like to finish with Rand Paul. Rand Paul is addressing the White House and Congress over the Syrian rebels that we're arming, which is an act of treason. So if you could please finish letting Rand Paul speak for himself, please finish LV6. Perhaps by throwing all of these weapons into the Civil War, we actually degraded Assad's ability to counter them. One of the men with the most knowledge on the ground of this, who's been our ambassador to Iraq and Syria, says, we don't have a clue who the moderates are and who the jihadists are. And even if they tell you they are the moderates, oh, we love Thomas Jefferson. Give us a shoulder-fired missile. We love Thomas Jefferson. Can you trust these people? Listen carefully. Your representatives are sending $500 billion to people who will tactically ally with Al-Qaeda. So we asked them, I asked Secretary Kerry, I said, where do you get the authority to wage this war? And he says, from 2001, some of the people fighting weren't born in 2001. Many of the people who voted in 2001 are no longer living. We voted to go to war in Afghanistan, and I supported going into that war because we were attacked and we had to do something about it. But the thing is, that vote had nothing to do with this. Absolutely nothing to do with this. You are a dishonest person if you say otherwise. That sounds pretty mean-spirited. Hear it again. You are intellectually dishonest if you argue that Something passed in 2001 to do with the people who attacked us on 9-11 has anything to do with sending arms into Syria. The moderate rebels are fighting with Al-Qaeda. We could use the 2001 use of authorization of force, as Secretary Kerry understands it, we could use that authorization of force to attack the same people we're giving the weapons to. Think about the insanity of this. There are valid reasons for war. They should be few and far between. They should be very importantly debated, not shuffled into a 2,000-page bill and shuffled under the rug. When we go to war, it's the most important vote that any senator will ever take. Many on the other side have been better on this issue. When there was a Republican in office, there were loud voices on the other side. I see an empty chamber. I'm not sending any American soldiers. I'm not sending your son, your daughter, or mine over to the middle of that chaos. The people who live there need to stand up and fight. Civilized Islam needs to say to radical Islam, this does not represent our religion. That the beheading of civilians, that rape and killing women does not represent Islam. The voices aren't loud enough. Absolutely, the voices are not loud enough. It's treason. And what does Obama have to say about that? Let's replay that one more time. Too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. Yes, let's hear that one more time. Too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. So last time I checked, President Obama, whether you agree or not, owes allegiance to the United States as president of the United States of America. He is adhering to our enemy. He's giving them aid and comfort and weapons. Now, what does that code say? 18 U.S. Code 23. 81, and he is not the only one. There are members in Congress that are just as guilty. Where are you in that corruption, FBI? Why aren't you doing your job as per your mission statement to combat major white-collar crime and combat significant violent crime and protect the United States from terrorist attacks? 
as they allow the open borders. And then people who are don't have permission to be here shuffled all across the United States of America and criminal aliens who have been convicted of murder and rape let out onto our streets and you want to target the American people for non violent issues which is not even a federal issue in the first place because you're following it under your commerce clause that is amazing to me on ABC before they were antique MSM They had an interview with a man named Michael Levine. Let's see what kind of corruption he exposes with the DEA. Please play LV7. Yes. The book is called The Big White Lie. Its author says that for decades, the CIA has protected some of the world's biggest drug dealers, all supposedly in the interest of promoting democracy. Author Michael Levine was an undercover agent for the Drug Enforcement Agency for 25 years. You may also remember his 1990 best-selling book called The Drug Ward, The Deep Cover. Nice to have you back here. I, I mean, if this is true, the premise is so disturbing. I want to make sure that I understand it correctly, that our government, the U.S. government, particularly the CIA and the Pentagon, have supported and protected international drug barons in the name of fighting communism. Well, that's the pretext. Uh, Let me put it very succinctly. Uh, What I'm saying is that while working undercover between the years of 1978 and and, uh, 1982, posing as a mafia drug baron, half Hispanic, half Italian, I witnessed firsthand uh, the CIA commit high treason. I witnessed the sellout of the war on drugs. Uh, 1978, let me put it into historic uh, context. Uh, 1978, the demand for cocaine and later crack was skyrocketing. The need for a supply, a steady supply, uh, the South Americans could not keep up with that demand. And what they needed, in in essence, was the general motors of cocaine. Well, in Bolivia, then uh, supplying up to 90% of the world's coca base, that general motors of cocaine began to form. Uh, that General Motors of cocaine was comprised of uh, escaped Nazi fugitives, uh, Nazi war criminals like Klaus Barbie, Argentine mass murderers, gangsters from all over Europe, and drug dealers. I was assigned to create an undercover sting. I actually created a whole undercover mafia family, and we were assigned to stop that uh, General Motors of cocaine from happening, and we were absolutely successful. So then we, what happened? Then what happened, enter the CIA, they destroy the case, they take the, those elements of the Bolivian government, the Lydia Gala government that was helping, this was the last vestige in South America of anti-drug forces, they helped the drug dealers, they helped Klaus Barbie, Why? they helped... Well, the pretext was uh, national security. Uh, If you read The the Big White Lie, I think you'll agree with me that that's just a lie, Uh, that a lot of rogue CIA agents just made a fortune. Uh, There were a whole other, there's a whole array of other, it's an out-of-control agency. I think they're still out of control right now. There's no laws governing You think the CIA is still out of control? Oh, absolutely. If you read the newspaper events of what's going on in Haiti, uh, it's it's a repeat of everything that happened. Uh, I think it's important to focus on a woman probably uh, a woman who's unknown until this moment. Uh, she was the most powerful figure in the drug world in this South is America. Sonia. Sonia Atala. Okay. Throughout South America, she was known as the queen of cocaine. She was part of this Bolivian government. Now, mind you, this is a Bolivian government that vowed, vowed specifically to invade the United States with cocaine, and that was the words of the prime minister. The vanguard of that invasion was Sonia Atala. Uh, This is a woman who had uh, a detachment of Nazi mercenaries assigned to her at her beck and call. She was a woman who uh, her house was a veritable torture chamber. That's where those members of the the Bolivian government that helped us were tortured to death. She was uh, a woman who was so elusive that of all the figures in the Argentine government, her name never appeared in the DEA computer. I targeted her. Now, when the CIA stepped in and destroyed this case, I began to 
to complain within house i began to complain to the justice department when that didn't work i complained within the drug enforcement administration when that didn't work i went to the media suddenly i was put under investigation by the internal security forces of dea uh, an attempt was made on my life that i describe in the book very clearly i believe the cia was behind that i'm then forced transferred back to the united states where i'm placed under an intensive investigation i mean all i wanted to do was win the drug war now an incredible thing happens i'm suddenly approached by a dea agent he comes in and he sits down in my office and he says we want you to work in the most sensitive undercover case we have it's called operation hun we want you to work with a woman uh, she's a woman who sold drugs for the bolivian government she's probably the biggest informer we'll ever had we want you to pose as her lover we want you to pose as her business partner the, the catch is that there's a colombian killer who's after her she owes them several million dollars and they have people all over the world hunting her the target of the operation is going to be the same bolivian government that the cia put into power i'm astounded uh, i i accept the assignment and there began operation hun uh, which is half the story in the big white lie yeah and i should and say with all these allegations that you're making are you concerned about your own personal safety now I, I, for years uh, i never thought i'd write this book you're talking about an agency that's uh, been governed by no laws to an agency to whom murder means absolutely nothing did the cia know that you were in the process of writing this and no they... Um, they didn't uh, what I, I do know is that i was put well, my son uh, new york police sergeant keith levine was murdered by uh, uh, drug crack addicts, addicts yeah. crack addicts my my baby brother david was a drug addict for 19 years he committed suicide so you have a personal interest I, at here this point well. at this point i knew that before i died i wanted history set straight uh, and this isn't an academic book this is an undercover odyssey this is the way yet? i lived it well Any the book reaction? is first out now yeah but uh, I, so and, no reaction yet from colleagues in the cia oh, from from uh, first of all let me say this i'm not pointing a finger at the cia in general because i belong to an agency called the national security alumni which is mostly cia agents uh, cia agents who abhor what these rogue agents have gotten away with under the pretext of national security can we turn it this around is, now yeah sure we think we can still turn it around yeah you've got you absolutely you've got to follow the leadership of uh, people like sheriff jack demillo of uh, uh, cape cod massachusetts uh, who's instituted a fight back program focusing on the drug user focusing on people here yes well most and with that i ask you we have 18 U.S. Code, 1519. Now, with everything that I've played so far in the clips, we have destruction and alteration or falsification of records in federal investigations. We have treason. We have conspiracy to commit offense or defraud the United States, 18 U.S. Code, 371. We have perjury. Perjury, generally, 18 U.S. Code, 1621. Eric Holder, all sorts of people high up within the government, if you will, which the FBI is supposed to allegedly keep in check. They're supposed to hold people accountable that are committing these atrocious situations because they're supposed to defend the Constitution of the United States of America, allegedly. So let me give you this code, 18 U.S. Code 1621, perjury generally. How many times have they been busted in Congress and congressional record Committing perjury. Having taken an oath before a competent tribunal, officer, or person, in any case in which a law of the United States authorizes an oath to be administered, that he will testify, declare, depose, or certify truly, or that any written testimony, declaration, disposition, or certificate by him subscribed is true, willfully, to and contrary to such oath, states or subscribes any material matter which he does not believe to be true, or in any declaration, certificate, verification, or statement under penalty of perjury as permitted under Section 1746 and Title 28, United States Code, willfully subscribes as true any material matter which he does not believe to be true, is guilty of perjury and shall, except as otherwise expressly provided by law, be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than five years or both. This section is applicable whether the statement or subscription is made within or without the United States. How many 
have we dealt with for many years that we could hold to that? Where are our good FBI agents? Why aren't we seeing these individuals being held accountable? Why aren't we being seeing the people who were behind Fast and Furious selling weapons to the Sonola drug cartel that caused hundreds of deaths? And I say hundreds of deaths because I'm talking about both sides of the border. Weapons linked to Fast and Furious have been linked to over 200 murders, yet not one agent, not one person who was behind that scheme to set up your unalienable right to bear arms. You don't have a constitutional right. If someone tells you you don't have a constitutional right, they are correct. Do you know why? Because the Constitution gives you no rights. It affords you no rights. You were born with those rights from your first breath. You had them. Your Bill of Rights solidified it on paper, which you already had. That is a Bill of Limitations, and it limits what the federal government and the states are not allowed to touch. Because we, the people, created those entities that now come against us. They want to be seen as good men and women. They want us to respect what they do. Respect is earned. It is not freely given. And on that note, I'm going to let Jason Chaffetz say and solidify exactly what I just said. What is the role of this government? Who is the master of this corporation? I think he says it very well. Please play LV3. Security. Um, Sunlight is said to be the best disinfectant without... Knowing what our government is doing, we can't ensure it is operating efficiently and effectively. It's also important to remember that the American people pay for the federal government. The uh, federal government works for the American people. It's not the other way around. And so it is, you would think, logical to make sure that we are as open and transparent and accessible as possible. But this is always a running battle. And we always have to find the proper balance between safety and security and openness and transparency. But we can't give up all of our liberties in the name of security. And so. And I think he said that well. On that note, I'm going to bring on uh, our guest for this evening. We have uh, Keith Jones. How are you doing tonight, Keith? No, I'm doing fine. Good. It is good to have you. And we also have Eric Hughes Jones from Courtroom observers how are you doing tonight eric i'm doing real well thanks for having me back on Lori. during these trying times absolutely absolutely now a lot of people may not understand why i did the first half of the show in the manner that i did but i think this really all goes together and it goes together with whether it be the bundy's case whether it be um tom's case whether it be pete santilli's case all of these individual factions because the FBI is being used as um, pretty much political puppets um, and you know other than the unconstitutionality of it in the first place okay in general the there is a part that is there's a large compartmentalization we know this we know they're fed a lot of stuff but we also know that, you know, ignorance of the law is no excuse. We also know that we're tired of excuses coming from people who are supposed to be knowledgeable in these things. We're supposed to look up to these individuals, and yet 
these individuals, when we ask them or tell them certain things, just as Lori said last night, she was referring to the Social Security number last night, and they had no idea what she was talking about. There, Do you find that there is no excuse for that, and why in the world they are allowed to target individual Americans when in reality the federal government never has had a hand in even the FBI – lawfully has never been able to have a hand in actually over individual people it was over the construct of an agreement between the states and the federal if you will is that correct well yeah Lori. my take is when these agencies become so overbearingly large and bureaucratic and top heavy with administrators They have to really create things to perpetuate the reason for their existence. I know someone very well who you also know, uh, who was a young man who was in the in the uh, who was recruited by many different law enforcement and three letter agencies. Top of his class in marksmanship, top of his class in, in in curriculum, top of his class in martial arts. And he was told, "Sir, we have no need for the use of your services." Now he was the best, top top rated guy. And they said, we can't use you because you place too much of a high value on life. Uh, we need people who are willing to kill, get as many people killed as possible to justify the existence of the agency. He was told that, and then he was let go. The problem is the good apples are getting put out to pasture, and the bad apples are being retained by the agencies. And that's what our problem is right now. And they have to perpetuate their existence by not, not infiltrating, quote-unquote, terrorists or or. Uh, dangerous organizations, which are very few and far between, uh, they actually have to create these organizations uh, with the FBI agents at the top and then suck in as many useful idiots as they can who don't really know what they're getting involved with, whether it's, you know, and I won't even go through the names of the, uh, but, you know, you know what I'm talking Mm -hmm. about. It's basically creating, it's called the Hegelian dialectic, create the problem, offer the solution, and then write in as the savior because you've created the problem. You can manage the solution very well. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. Yes. And with I that, um, right right before uh, I pull Keith on here, the reason, one of the main reasons that I am um, discussing all of this is, as you know, Tom, we found out, is in the Federal Detention Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm going to give you some information, so I'm going to ask that individuals – Please get out pens and paper because this is extremely important. Tom's rights are being violated, and I don't mean just because of the denial of bail. I mean he is not being given his medication, and I'm going to give you information on how you can help. And right after a word from the network sponsors, we'll be right back with you. Please hang in there with us. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. Aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. Airoutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to Airoutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at Airoutfitting.com. 
Those are mighty nations. Bless the above all of creation. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN Network. You are here with me, Lori Anderson, your host for this evening, along with John O. And along with Eric Hughes Jones of Courtroom Observers and Keith Jones, we before the break started discussing um, Tom Lacavera and Tom Lacavera Stewart, who is a host of the show, who was incarcerated by the feds on Tuesday, December the sixth of two thousand and sixteen. So this is the information I want you to please write down. It has been reported to me by Tom's significant other that Tom has not had his medication since Tuesday, December the 6th, 2016. He is supposed to have his medication twice a day. For y'all of those of new listeners, Tom has Lyme disease. That that constitutes, um, in my opinion, as cruel and unusual punishment and a violation of his rights. You have certain unalienable rights, and he has not been found guilty of any crime. Uh, the situation of what they are trying to charge him under is a commerce, and this yeah, is Lori. absolutely from from the car here where we're on the road and so forth. The, the motor's a little loud. Forgive us, but uh, Ab- we, uh, you know, along those lines, this is not only a violation of numerous federal state statutes. A, viol- a violation of the internationally accepted uh, rules of how prisoners are to be treated. You cannot deny somebody their medication. Why? Because you don't like them or you think they're... I mean, their due process has not even been executed yet. Tom hasn't had... Uh, first of all, where's the victim to his crime? Mm-hmm. The whole thing's a fraud on its face because of that concept and precept right there. Under common law and, and natural law, which is what we should live under as free men and free women... Uh, if also, not you know, victim, where's intent? Yeah. Where is where is any intent as well? None. And and once again, they're going to be charging him with this bizarre lie called constructive possession, which means if you had access to a room where there was a gun, then you are you're quote possessing it. I don't think so. We have to go back to the dictionary definition. We have to get our terms correct. We have to not give the enemy the language. Look it up. Possession is defined as actual holding or occupancy actual holding and it says in my dictionary the american heritage dictionary of the english language the definition of possession requires actual holding or occupancy so if it's an item you have to be holding it in your hands if it is a piece of property like a car or a camper or a house you have to be in it that's a form of possession but having access to a room where there may be a gun that's not possession and and this cannot we cannot let anyone make up language that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as constructive possession. It's a term made up by the bar attorneys so they can railroad people uh, for an, uh, under statutory charges for victimless crimes. Who is, the purpose of the federal court in this nation is to prosecute crimes against the United States. Who, what crime against the United States was committed by Tom having access to a room that happened to have a gun in it? Never was it seen in his hand. They're not, he's not being charged with holding it. So the whole thing's completely fraudulent. And so he's being held without, without bail without his me- and being denied his medication. I mean, look up right. the Geneva Convention. I know it has its problems, but you cannot treat prisoners that way, especially domestically. That's it's seriously egregious. Right. Well, that's also in violation of the excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor in cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Um, so, I mean, they yeah, have... And I believe the concept, both in the federal and the state constitution, say bail shall, uh, uh, timely bail shall be provided uh, mm-hmm. except in uh, instances of capital offense. That means mur- where murder is charged. There's no, not right. even anything close to that. They can't even pick a victim to this alleged crime. So, I mean, where's, and he should have been provided bail immediately at his first appearance, which should have been his arraignment, this whole mm-hmm. thing about an identity hearing uh, and constructive possession and all these other lies that the courts and the attorneys are making up are making it easy for the government to prosecute people like Tom for doing nothing and right. let the real... Which they never had authority to make that law in the first place. Shall not means just that. 
And individuals need to really look up infringed um, because the definition of infringed would actually surprise some people. However, I'm not going to go into that definition right now. But uh, they also need to look up the Dick Act of 1902. Um, this is a newer phenomenon about the, the felons. That's cruel and unusual punishment. Once somebody, um, whether they're misdemeanors or whatever, they just keep pushing that envelope in order to disarm the people. And we need to realize that once somebody has paid their fines and done their time, we ha- the, the government nor the state has any authority really truly to stop them from having weapons to defend themselves. But I w- this well, is what I want people to write down. Right now, Tom, uh, he, you can write down Thomas Robert Lacavera is how they have him in the system. He is located right now in Phil, uh, the Federal De- Detention Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It is located at 700 Arch, A-R-C-H Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The phone number there is 215-521-4000. I'll repeat that again, 215-521-4000. If you go to the website of www.bop.gov and you click on Contact Us if you prefer to reach out via email, You can click on the Contact Us button, do the drop-down box, and you can have inmate concerns or health care position questions. You can click on that, and you can send your grievance to them that way as well. Now, with sending it via email, it does say that it may take about 20 to 30 working days for a response, so it's better if, if we do call we need to find out why he's being denied his medications he needs to have his medications i believe i may be wrong but i believe that that is uh not only under cruel and unusual punishment but i believe it could possibly be um a a violation when it comes to the ada am i right or wrong about that one keith well, it's not necessarily the, the fact of the ADA in that sense, but there's, like you said, the uh, unusual punishment. And this is part of the problem with NDA, NDA or and the bill, was there was no real specific because they thought that that was going to be picked up through the former other bill. But the problem lies and still is most law enforcement do not know how to work and deal with disabilities. Mm-hmm. Being people need meds or whatever. A good example, there is not a a prison or a jail in this country that's set up for wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Nowhere. If you're in a wheelchair, they don't know what to do you. 99% of the country or counties or whoever, how you want to say it, don't even have a wheelchair accessible vehicle to take a person in a wheelchair to be booked even. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the part of this came out, and then this is what, uh, what, you're, what I'm driving at, is we have the AD bill, but there's also a bill beyond that called the Osteen bill. Okay? okay? And what happened was a gentleman who was in a wheelchair person got picked up for speeding. Okay? He went his day to uh, court. Okay? And this was in Tennessee. He got as far as the first floor, but guess where the courtroom is at? It was on the floor. Mm-hmm. Guess what was missing? Uh, accessibility. Go from first floor to the third floor. Oh, nice. Okay. Now this is about ten years after the American Disabilities Act was done. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they've had plenty of time to retrofit and do what they need to. Okay. So he went home. There's a bench warrant issued to him. Law enforcement came to him. He said, "I'll tell you what." I'll take your bill, your your uh, ticket, whatever you want to say it. He says, but the thing here, you have to understand one of two things. You either put an elevator in that room or you and your buddy take care of me all the way upstairs. If you drop me, guess what happens? Yep, well, guess I'll what see. happens to his deal? <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. this is a problem that we have here. And you talk, you brought it up earlier is the fact that there needs to be an outcry, and unfortunately that outcry 
in this building community has been over and over, but they've gotten so tired of it, and we've gotten nowhere with, nowhere with it. Now, I did a little research, you asked me, and I did not know what, because I've dealt with so many different diseases and so many things over the years. I've been doing this for 40 years plus. So mm-hmm. it's, hard, it's hard to remember all the different new ones and some of the stuff that's come about. Right. I also did research and found out this can cause major joint pain and problems. It can cause neurology problems, and it can mm-hmm. cause headaches, and all that comes with balance. Okay? Mm-hmm. I suffer from balance, so I know what that's like firsthand. Right. Now, my question to these people is, you can start giving him his meds, or you're going to have someone to make sure that he doesn't fall down from balance and hit and crack his head open, and then guess what you get lined up with? And the second part was that he goes in a wheelchair, where are you going to put him? Mm-hmm. Okay. So and I'm going to make this, you know where my stand is for attorneys, but I'm going to throw this out to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. First thing is there is a, uh, a, a couple in Denver, Colorado, and they probably wouldn't remember me because it's been years ago since I associated with them, but there's a group called Fox and Rob. Mm-hmm. F-O-X and then Rob, R-O-B. They're a couple. They're both wheelchair people. They've been doing stuff for years for this really uh, laws and the whole the whole get and go. Uh, they're associated with a group called Adapt, and uh, they're all wheelchair. In fact, I was part of the group when we did the crawl uh, up to the state capitol in Denver. That was quite a deal. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, under the American Disabilities Act, they're, they're, when you go to the attorney, they take a, a third of whatever you get from your lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Or they charge you, or however, okay. But under Rehabilitation Act of '73, there's a 505. And this is where it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. Under the 505, you find yourself an attorney that will charge a market rate per hour. So we're okay. saying say it's it's three hundred fifty dollars an hour just for argument's sake here, okay? Mm-hmm. They spend they oh, that's say, they, they four fifty. Well, okay, but I'm just. Well, not a number, okay? Let's say they spend 20 hours doing their case. They charge them 350 times that 20 hours. Mm-hmm. That can rack up some real money real quick. Mm-hmm. Sure can. Okay. So, so my argument is at this point, what you and I need, or Eric can be involved if he'd like to, is we need to find ourselves an attorney. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm going to also say, say both this. Civil and criminal. Right. And I'm going to also say this for the listeners, um, because I I forgot to say this earlier, so I want to state this again. Tom is at the uh, Federal Detention Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His register number is 66455-050. You are going to need that number in order to be able to to uh, send an email or even when you're discussing over the telephone to inquire about his medications that they are not giving to him. Let's remember that we um, here on uh, Resurrect the Republic always, we can speak firmly and justly for someone's rights without being rude. Let's make sure we're not rude or threatening in any way especially if you're a new listener and you don't understand that, that does not get you anywhere. But we do need to be firm that he needs his medications. The phone number for that is 215-521-4000. The location, if you want to uh, start a protest out there, is 700 Arch, A-R-C-H Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19106. And we need to stand up for Tom just as as he has stood up for us. I also want to mention Lori. I spoke with her earlier today. She wanted to say thank you to the individuals who donated. Uh, She received $30 donated last night. She did get that to um, Tom on his books, and she received $50 from a friend. She wants to thank the individuals who donated very much. They are in need of a lot more donations. The way for you to donate, you can donate via PayPal to TomLacavera at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. 
or you can go to resurrecttherepublic.com and you can click on that PayPal donate button because the the network sponsors sponsor RBN and not Resurrect the Republic. However, this uh, call for donations is not even for the radio show itself. This is to help Tom individually, and we need to join together just like he would for us. He fights for everyone that needs a voice, and I want to let you know this. The, according to the CDC.gov, the later signs and symptoms of the Lyme's disease – you have severe headaches and neck stiffness, mm-hmm. additional EM rashes or other areas of the body, arthritis mm-hmm. with severe joint pain and swelling, particularly the knees and large joints, facial palsy, loss of muscle tone or drop on one or both sides of the face, intermediate pain in tendons, muscles, joints, and bones, heart palpitations or an irregular heartbeat, episodes of dizziness or shortnesses of breath, inflammation of the brain and the spinal cord, nerve pain, shooting pains, numbness, tingling of the hands or feet, problems with short-term memory, and they are refusing to give him his medication. He is supposed to take it twice a day, and he has not had his medication since December the 6th of 2016. We're asking for everybody, please make those calls. Activism makes the difference. Do so in a responsible manner because we will not lower ourselves to their standards. Hey, um, Lori, have, yes. have, they stated a, have they stated a claim as to why they're denying him his medication? Not Someone to my just knowledge. Someone asked me that question directly. They're looking, huh? not, not to my knowledge. Okay. Not my to my knowledge. Is, my question is, where, was he, where did they pick him up at? They picked him up in New Jersey, and, okay. and they took him to Philly. And yeah, they they had him in a New Jersey court, but then they put him in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's called kidnapping. Yes, I know. Yes, they do it Absolutely. all the time. The purpose is to take the person far as far away from their support group and people as possible, so they they don't have visitors, they don't have people to assist them with their case, etc. Right. And then they're contemplating, they've refused him bail, you know, and all of that good little stuff, which is absolutely insane because he apparently was such a threat that when this happened in January of 2016 that that the state boys who were there did not arrest him, did not act as if it was anything except for, you know, it is what it is. And now all of a sudden the feds are picking it up, allegedly an indictment September of 2016 so it took right there nine months to to get that indictment which i find ironic in and of itself if he's such a threat to society nine months is a a pretty long wait on that and then on top of that after september when that alleged indictment i say alleged indictment because you can't see a grand jury foreman signature there is no court stamp on it i have seen it myself it does not appear to be a real indictment in my opinion because i've seen a lot of indictments it does not resemble one and um it it is amazing that this happened approximately one week after he had openly announced on the radio show that he was going to Nevada to cover the Bundy trial and uh, and the such. So we definitely need individuals to please, um, even if you only donate a dollar, dollars add up. And if you could please donate to help Tom and Lori, um, they need your help. He needs money on his books, for one, to get warm clothes. He not only needs that, but he needs help with getting a, um, hopefully, a constitutional attorney that will fight for his rights if um, if they have the ability to do so. And as you know, $30 does not go a long way, but it does help tremendously. And thank you to those who did um, previously donate. Please, I hope that uh, you do um, move and and call this office and find out because uh, that really is a, a possible um, lawsuit in and of itself. And the problem is what we were trying to address at the beginning is I'm tired of 
people trying to make it who work for the FBI trying to make themselves look as if they are heroes helping the United States of America's citizens when in reality they know that is not the case. If that was the case, then they would be getting these um, uh, sex rings put in order, these individuals that are behind it. They cannot claim they don't know about it. They would get these people who are funneling money that is the people's money um, in violations, the perjurers that are in Congress that are attacking everybody's rights because ultimately they need to understand they're targeting their own children. We're not targeting anybody. You're targeting your own children and their future, and you're making it okay for somebody else to do that to your children as well, and that is our concern, everybody's concern on that end. Now, I do have a caller. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that caller, and then we'll we'll continue with that discussion. Glenn, how are you doing this evening? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, first time I've uh, called into your show, I was mm-hmm. uh, listening uh, to your show about uh, felony convictions and the rights after. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is your uh, personal opinion about a uh, person that uh, has had a felony conviction that's been released, uh, been in society for a number of years, and uh, has performed uh, in society the way we all do? Uh, mm-hmm. Do you think that person should have all his rights restored? or uh, Absolutely. Not? Let me tell you something. Constitutionally speaking, okay, constitutionally yes. speaking... Um, there, that is no justification for anybody's rights to be taken from them. Let me tell you why, for several reasons, okay? Perfect. First of all, your all rights, or first of all, your rights are unalienable. You are born with them, okay? The Constitution does not give you any rights. It does not afford you any rights. It limits what the government is and is not allowed to touch, Okay. Now, Um, once you have been convicted of a crime, all right, and we're not going to go into it right now, but most people don't get any due process in the United States of America these days anyway. But the reality is, um, let's assume that the person had due process and they got convicted, okay, and they served their time and they paid their debt to society per se, okay? To continue to punish them is cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, agreed. They have paid well, their debt to society. Of, and it's also a form of uh, double jeopardy. Uh, yes, because it is. under double jeopardy, you can't be tried for the same offense twice. And he's not only, uh, he's being punished for the same offense twice. He hasn't even gone to a second trial yet. And they're really punishing him for his first offense in this instance because everything is revolving around that initial minor statutory felony that he had in his past. And like your caller said, they're using people who have these minor, nonviolent, minor statutory felonies in their past, sometimes over a decade ago, uh, Mm -hmm. using that as an excuse to come and disarm people. And usually the patriots are at the top of the list, so it's obvious persecution. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to put one plus one together in that regard. You know, and even way back in the day, even way back in the day, Sorry. Even way – it's okay. I'll let you speak just one second. I just want to okay. point out one quick point. Way back in the day um, when individuals were released from jail, which there was very little jails back in the day, but I'm talking about like the Western era, okay? Um, their guns were not taken from them when they got released. They still had their guns. You're 100% correct about that. Okay. That became a phenomenon – um, you know, when you're talking about the Jim Crow era and the things like that. Um, the the gun issue when let's let's just talk reality, which for some reason Congress cannot grip um, and other individuals cannot grip per these codes. And, you know, they want to continue to punish individuals who have already served their time or paid their fines. Uh, the reality of the fact is if someone is intent on harming another individual, 
okay, mm-hmm. whether it be murder or whatever the case may be. It does not matter what their code or that sheet of paper says. They are going to be able to get a hold of either a weapon. They are going to be able to use a car as a weapon. You can use gasoline as a weapon. You can use crock pots. As a, you can use hairspray as a weapon. So the reality is, is it gives people a false sense of safety is the reality of it. Because the hardened criminals, whether they are American citizens or whether they are not American citizens, the hardened criminals are not going to give a rip what's on that sheet of paper. They're going to do what they want to do, and they're going to um, attack whomever they want to attack. And that is why it is so important that every individual is trained and armed As per what we are supposed to be, because it is our duty to not only protect ourselves, but to protect our communities, to protect our children, which, of course, makes our communities safer. It makes a less of a need for the police state, because when you have a society that is armed, you end up having a lot less crime. You don't have the need for, uh, let's say, 175 officers. You can look at Kennesaw, Georgia. They used to have a very high crime rate over 25 years ago. And what they did because of their high crime rate, they mandated gun ownership. They had only 5,000 people at that time. And what happened was when they mandated that everybody have um, arms and uh, the ammunition with it, of course, unless it's against your religious preference or if you were a convicted felon, and then what – or against your belief. In other words, you weren't fined for not having it, but it was still a mandate. Over 25 years ago, you can look up their crime stats. Their violent crime went to zero. When I mean violent crime, I'm talking murder and rape. Okay, Their violent crime went to zero. Over 25 years running, you have that mandate. Criminals don't go in there. They don't like someone who is not an easy target or victim. And on top of that, their population went from 5,000 to over 29,000 people and no problems uh, in any mass problems. You know, you have car break-ins and stuff like that with people not over there. But, you know, you're going to have some sort of crime. But the reality is these codes and stuff, first of all, are unconstitutional. Congress shall make no law. It's not just the First Amendment. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Well, listen, 25 years ago, I'm uh, 58 years old. 25 years ago, uh, Mm -hmm. I was uh, served time for involuntary manslaughter. Hold on just one second, Glenn. Stay with us, and I will let you uh, tell me that on the other half of the break. Right now, we just need to hear a couple of words from the broadcast sponsors, and we'll be right back. Glenn, hang in there with us, as well as you, Eric, John, and Keith. This is the most transparent administration in history. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. Introduce the I Can Get To Silent Salesman mobile marketing app, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com now or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. Get the I can get two. That's I C A N G E T the number 2 silent salesman app at appsapart.com. That's A P P S A P A R T.com. Hi folks, in a world of GMO genetically modified organisms 
systems, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders. And herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Extendivite is more than just a heart tonic. Most basic diseases are caused by yeast in the gut and metals in the liver, and we all have a bit of both. The garlic in Extendivite has a yeast-killing effect in the gut while also helping the sulfur enzyme in the liver get rid of the metals. Extendivite just may improve your overall health. Products like Extendivite are the only way we are going to get our society healthy. And if you're waiting for the government and pharmaceutical care to solve your health problems, you're going to have a long, disappointing wait, I think. Extendivite is a complete formula for extended life in the new millennium. 80 can be the new 60. Extendivite is available in capsule or liquid form for just $69.95 for a two-month supply. To get started, call 1-877-928-8822. That's Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio broadcast on RBN Network. And we were just in conversation with one of our callers, Glenn. Uh, welcome back on the other side of the break. And if you would, go ahead and, and start with the question that you were you were asking. Well, I was saying that uh, we were talking about constitutional rights. Uh, mm-hmm. 25 years ago, uh, I'm uh, 58 years old now, uh, I was uh, convicted uh, uh, for uh, uh, manslaughter, DUI, uh, uh-huh. uh, a drinking and driving conviction. I spent my time. Uh, when I got out, I had to uh, spend time on probation with a parole officer. Uh-huh. And at the end uh, parole uh, term, I asked uh, my parole officer, I said, uh, I'm a hunter. Uh, can I have weapons? Uh, can I hunt and everything else? And uh, he wouldn't give me a direct answer, but he said, uh, uh, you're a free man. Uh, you can, you know, that's it. He wouldn't give me a direct answer. Uh-huh. So uh, I, uh, I told him uh, that means I have the right uh, to protect myself if somebody comes to my house. And he still wouldn't give me an answer. And uh, I do protect myself. I mean, I've been hired by uh, over the last 25 years by s- several major corporations and everything else. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, if you were in my position, uh, how would you look at it? Oh, absolutely. You know, like I said, you know, we have to fight to get the the corporate government to understand that they're violating their own bylaws basically is what we have to do however absolutely if you served your time you're you're off your probation constitutionally speaking um they have no right to infringe upon your unalienable rights see yes, but, what, uh, what so no, many people incident, don't go ahead no uh you know uh an incident may occur where i uh, may have to uh, protect my property uh and then uh uh, law enforcement will say, hey, 25 years ago you had a felon, and mm-hmm. I, I don't have the right to protect myself. Right. That's what they will tell you. That's what they will push. But what right. we are tr- what we do here is we try to expose that that's not 
they really never had that authority in the first place. We're trying to get them to really realize we're, we're actually, some of the individuals on this call, we're working on um, trying very hard to get them to understand that because the Bill of Rights is not a Bill of Rights. It's not. It's a Bill of Limitations. It's a Bill of Limitations. Uh, it if limits the federal a, government. If they, if they felt I was a threat to society, they should have never left, left me out, right? Right. And not only that, you know, the, this illusion of these statutes and these codes and these gun laws and all of this crud, they never had the authority to, to even write the first one. Now, that's but the truth did, of though. the matter. But they did, Oh, I know anyway. they did. They, they did. And it stems a lot through quote-unquote, the bar attorneys, um, because you have a lot of bar attorneys who are in Congress. You have a lot of bar attorneys who are sitting in judges' seats. You have a lot of bar attorneys. And we can go into that, believe me. And um, it's a fight. It's a fight because um, they act like if somebody made a mistake previously, well, you know, they can. They have to be controlled by by us, and it's also a system of control. It all leads back up to the UNODA disarmament. Um, but the reality is people who believe in this junk need to really understand, think about this. They're arming terrorists, known terrorists. They're arming known drug cartels that they know murder people. Do not tell us that it is not. It's because you're trying to protect society. It's because you're trying to control them. That's uh, what you're a hundred percent correct. So I'm a computer guy, right? Mm-hmm. I'm uh, shortly after I was released, uh, I was hired by a corporate company, and mm-hmm. I had to travel to Canada. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm an honest fellow, so I go to uh, I'm crossing the border, and they said, "Did you ever have a conviction for anything?" I told them the truth, and they said, "Well, you can't come into the country then," and they took me to the magistrate, and it was a big uh, computer system I was doing for the government there. Uh, uh, and so they put me in, the, in front of the magistrate, and the magistrate goes, uh, well, uh, does, it, does, your comp- does our company, uh, company that resides in Canada, need your services? I go, that's why they're bringing me here. And but a bing but a boom I'm in, right? right. It's all... A money game. It has nothing yes. to. I have had no problem working anywhere with uh, my prior conviction, but mm-hmm. that's uh, a blessing. If I go try to buy a weapon. I can't buy one. You know, mm-hmm. right? Because of I'm their worried. unlawful federal statutes. And go ahead. Who? Somebody said Ann Lori. Who was that? That was me. Okay. Go ahead. Can I make three comments real quick? Yes, you may. Uh, firstly. Uh, we talk about uh, the gun control and all and this whole thing. You're talking about uh, armament and everything. Look at Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Every, I mean, even junior high kids take their guns to school. Mm-hmm. Guess what their, 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 their crime rate's not even worth talking about. Okay? Yep. Next thing we were talking about, and you study and you find forget, out. Hil- let's not forget in that Switzerland comment, Hitler didn't try to invade it. <laughs> right. I'm not. I understand that. But what I'm saying is. Also, if you study, there's more people that die from gravity than they do people killing each other. Now, so what are we going to do? Our law of gravity? Oh, mm-hmm. now we get to float around in air? Hmm, that'd be fun. Right. The other thing, well, last I'm thing just... I was going to say Go ahead. Is, is the fact that one of the things that this gentleman can do also is get a hold of a peace flag. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that way, if anything happens under peace flag, if you study it through the Constitution, in our confederation, anything happens, then it becomes a situation of conquest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we know that there's a fight with this, and um, but the reality is constitutionally and, and constitutionally, the federal government never had any authority to to direct anything when it came to firearms. Nothing, um, and and the federal constitution, if you will was an agreement between the states and the federal government. It was not between the people. It was not for them to rule over individual people. It was to keep the states in line when it came to protecting individuals' rights. And it was to um, help if there was a dispute between the states and commerce. 
and it was to help ensure against invasion, which is almost tragic irony these days because, um, you know, while they called Crimea an invasion, I would like to know what the heck they call is going on here in the United States of America. Now, I wanted to make a real quick comment because I want to bring this back up so that everybody will know once again uh, Thomas Robert Lacavera is how they have Tom listed at the Federal Detention Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His register number is 66455-050. I want you to know that uh, if you decide that you want to protest because Tom is not getting his medications um, and that he has not been allowed bond, his the street address for the Federal Detention Center in Pen- Pen- Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is 700 Arch Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 191106. The phone number is 215-521-4000. If you want to send an email, you can go to www.bop.gov. And you can click on the Contact Us button. You will find a drop-down button or a drop-down bar, and it will have health care position questions and inmate concerns. Uh, please get involved. Tom would do this for us, and we need to do this for him just as we have stood for everyone else. If you want to donate to be able to help Tom, to get some good counsel and to get the items that he needs while he is in that uh, federal detention center, you can send a PayPal donation to tomlacavera at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. You can also find it on uh, www.resurrecttherepublic.com. And I just want to also remind everybody, thank you to those um, so much. To, to each and every individual who has already donated, uh, every donation does count, and it is being used to help Tom in this current situation. $30 was donated last night. Thank you. And a friend of Tom and Lori's donated $50 last night, and all of that is being used for Tom to be able to uh, get money on the book so that he can get clothing that he needs as well. But we need to make sure that we need to bring these phones off the hooks. We need to send these emails. We need to make sure that thousands upon thousands of people are calling to make sure that he gets his medications. Uh, We read what the uh, side effects of Lyme disease are if it's not treated and that that falls under cruel and unusual punishment. And um, I just want to say that I know personally if if the same situation were to be in reverse that tom would be fighting for me or he would be fighting for you eric or glenn or or you keith as well and tom has been very adamant in fighting for the right of the individuals uh no matter what the case may be um eric Can you let the individuals know as well, if they want to contact you to get on a list for updates of of possible um, behinds in the seats, let people know what Courtroom Observers does uh, since we only have about 15 minutes left of the show. And uh, if they want to get involved with being able to help with behinds in the seats and how to contact courtroom observers uh to get on that list in order to be notified um can you give them that information yes you can send me an email let's start with there um and i'll give my phone number as well so people who are not wanting to be online can always give me a call um the email is eric e-r-i-c the next name is hughes my middle name h-u-g-h-e-s that's e-r-i-c H-U-G-H-E-S dot N-Y at Yahoo dot com. That's Eric Hughes dot N-Y at Yahoo dot com. I'm in New York. That's why the N-Y. My phone number is 
five seven three zero nine two two zero. And what we are about is activism. Activism trumps paperwork every time. I love paperwork and we do a mean habeas corpus, but activism always trumps paperwork. I've seen the courts bury people's habeas corpuses and keep them incarcerated for six months without hearing. One woman in Connecticut, Tammy Stroud, was incarcerated in a psychiatric ward after being labeled a sovereign citizen. And her habeas corpus, which was very well done by another individual, uh, was put, placed at the bottom of the pile, and they kept her in there for six months. The stuff she witnessed is, is ungodly. Uh, we can have her on sometime. Uh, okay. She's a very level-headed woman who happened to uh, do some activist things and you know, be interested in the things we're interested in, and she suffered and paid the price because what the FBI is about now is not public protection or national protection. It's about setting up patriots because, the, because of the administration and the powers that, that should not be that have been dictating to the three-letter agencies what they should be doing uh, extra-legally, extra-judicially. Um, we know the score. So it's about activism. Your, your voice matters. Anybody out there who thinks that you want to stay in the shadows and why do I want to get involved and, hey, they're going to know who I am, I got news for you, pals. Everybody knows where you are. The Mossad and Interpol and the CIA and the National Security Agency knows where everybody is. All right. Mm -hmm. If you if you're breathing, if you're breathing, they know who you are and where you are. Live in the light. Come on out and do something about it and get active. People who don't care will be slaves. This country was not founded on inactivism. It was founded on severe activism or we'd still be living under British rule. And I would argue that we're back under such a situation right now. Follow the money. It always goes back to London. (laughs) It always goes back to London and Rome. So, you know, and these, you know, the agents a lot. Once again, we have to. We have to focus on the executioners because, I mean, this is what they teach you in martial arts. The order giver is not really to blame. It's the person who acts out on that order. The royal Mm -hmm. families and the commanders and the judges and the senators and congressmen and presidents can spit into the wind and all the illegitimate orders they would like to. And if there's nobody there who's stupid enough and evil enough to enforce those orders that are immoral and unlawful, such as what they're doing to Tom, we wouldn't have this problem. So it's the executioners that are propping up this illegitimate antichrist system with coat hangers and duct tape, hoping they're going to take down as many patriots as possible before the administration changes. And we may possibly have some positive change here with things getting better. The economy, people's freedom, their rights being respected, the courts doing the right thing. And that's what we're all trying to get to. We're trying to get to a better place. Uh, and unfortunately, we're not going to get there if people do nothing. So I would implore mm-hmm. people, your voice right. makes a difference. Do not hide, speak. Yes, sir, go ahead. Sorry, if I may interrupt, this is Glenn. Uh, I agree uh, 100% with uh, what you say, but the problem is that the uh, corruption is at a grassroots level. And if you don't handle it at a grassroots level, you're never going to, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant I a agree. bite at a time. Right. And the I problem is totally. you talk about a higher level, but we're, oh, no. we're, we're talking about the low level, too. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> to a fault, to a fault, I have been folk, hyper-focused on buy local, fix local. You're not going to have any fix at the, from top if down. You don't it, it is bottom local, up, and I agree 100%. You've got to take that. You're, you're not going to have nothing. Have nothing. And the right, problem exactly. is, I agree. Right, and that that's the whole problem. And the problem beyond that is that locally, uh, my fellow citizens around me are uh, oblivious to what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know and that the Bible, Bible, not the Bible, up your next the Bible neighbor, did not say the remnant would be big. Right. Can I make a quick uh, comment? Go ahead. If you go back and study history from 1620 to 17. 17- 60, this country was under common law or what you know, self governing counties. Okay, or you call it townships, whatever you want to say, the same principle. Okay, there were three of them there was a British, there's a proprietary, and there was a charter. Okay, and British is pretty obvious. The proprietary is a mix between charter and British, but there, because people did not want to wake up, the charter is what we need, and charter is what gives us our rights at a local level level. We have control well, we no longer of have what's that. going on. That's what I'm saying now. That's what I've been working on for seven or excuse me, fourteen years to learn this stuff so I can go out and start teaching people 
how we can do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent and, point. You know, we we are very well aware of the corruption, and I hope you will join in in the conversation uh, tomorrow night as well, Glenn, um, because people need to understand something, and we have pushed this and pushed this, and the understanding of this needs to be full-fledged because this will protect on local level all the way up to federal level. You need right. to understand the responsibility of the jury, jury nullification, because if everybody, if we can get everybody informed, and it doesn't matter what they write in their statutes, if the jury is informed and they know what's going on, they have the authority to judge that law and nullify it. That I is agree why it is imperative, imperative but, because if they know that, then there is no way they can continue to get by with the unlawfulness, whether it be on the federal mm-hmm. level, whether it be on the local level or the state level, it doesn't matter. And that is what uh, we try to do here is educate. And I'm not trying I to... Need, ex- I need my fellow citizen that lives next door to me to expound and have the same viewpoint and understanding that, understand that you do, but they don't. I, right, I'm, and it takes uh, my one person at a time. Yeah. Right, but here's the problem, okay? And I have found this to be very true with me. Um, I do, I write articles for freedomoutpost.com, and I am on this show, but a lot of times what it takes is the individual talk. You have to know it yourself mm-hmm. and look people in the eyes one-on-one and talk to them and use parables in which they themselves, it would affect them, and then bring mm-hmm. out the reality of it. And nine times out of ten, once they realize, wait a minute, you're right, mm-hmm. then they realize how it will benefit them. Because unfortunately today, we are in a very selfish society where if it doesn't benefit me – why should I do anything if it doesn't benefit me? So you have to, a lot of times when you're talking to somebody one-on-one, do it with something that they themselves can relate to and bring in, well, did you know that your individual rights you were born with, that the Constitution nor the Bill of Rights gives you any rights, it limits the federal government, it does not limit you? That's why you have the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. Many people forget that Ninth and Tenth Amendment. How many people realize that the Seventh Amendment, the Seventh Amendment, it's in suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, a right to a trial by a jury shall be preserved. Okay? $20. Can we say traffic court people? All right. So – Let's remember, a lot of people don't remember that the uh, the Ninth Amendment, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights, shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The Tenth Amendment, the powers that are not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. It shall be in pursuance thereof. People keep forgetting that. They keep trying to quote, oh, well, that supremacy clause. But in that supremacy clause, it has to be in pursuance thereof. In pursuance to what? It was a new document when you're talking about the Constitution. So if you're talking about it has to be in pursuance thereof, pursuance to what? Articles of Confederation. And when you look at the Articles of Confederation, the people were above because the people were what created those documents and your constitutions of each one of your states. A constitution, the definition of it, it means it is laws that govern a nation. We are many nations. We are in a union. We are not one country. And our nations gathered together in unity – to protect themselves and in agreement. That's why nobody we are the denies, united. Nobody denies, hey, nobody denies what you're saying, but we are 
You'd be surprised. People do Simply, because they, they've uh, been know, brainwashed. We're, talk, we're talking about simpletons that live. I mean, how do you express your your viewpoint to simpletons that live around us and and get them uh, to call us and uh, uh, move forward uh, uh, in the proper way? You're, well, first you have to engage. First of in all, they're not going the, 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 the verbiage and language you use. I understand it. Uh, mm-hmm. The people that that are on this understand that. But my next door neighbor, he might be a uh, a physicist or whatever. But they're in another world. They don't get it. Okay, the, and the I understand is, what you're saying. But let people, me let me explain you know? something to you. I have spoken with very young individuals that have no clue what the Bill of Rights is, what the Constitution is. They only know Facebook, okay? You have to, you have to, in order to make that and be that difference, you have to figure out what it is that makes that individual tick, talk to them on their level, and make it connect for them. And I have done that many times, one-on-one with individuals, and their eyes opened. And it takes that time. It does take time. It takes an effort, and it takes love. They need to know you're telling them out of love and compassion and not out of any other reason. And with that, I want to say... Thank you, everybody, for joining me tonight. Join us tomorrow night. I believe we will probably be touching on the topic of jury nullification tomorrow night. And please get engaged. Let's help Tom get his medications. Remember, his register number is 664-55-050. And the phone number in order to be able to contact The Federal Department of Corrections is 215-521-4000. Let's do it with honor, integrity, and make sure that as we stand for truth and what is right, let's do it in honor and not in a threatening manner. I want to say thank you. God bless you for every one of you who, who were with us tonight. And as always, watch your backs and check your facts. Thank you to all and good night.